next generation levels of data reduction can be achieved when applying them on top of a new systems architecture like we have with our days system is that their files or their objects are already reduced using some compression method and that you're not going to be able to see any additional gains from VAST's universal storage. And I think if you think about that through the lens of conventional systems architectures, then that's the conclusion that people naturally make. But I'm going to explain today how things can be different based upon some new invention that we've created. I'm Jeff Denworth. I'm CMO and co-founder of VAST Data. And thanks for taking a moment to learn a little bit more about what we call similarity. So let's start a little bit and think about the types of data that we're talking about here. And typically, when people start to think about file and object data, most commonly what users will do as they store this data into the system is they'll run some standard compression algorithms against that data. So maybe that's something like uh, gzip or snappy or let's say LZO or Facebook invented a new one called Z standard. These mechanisms are designed to find patterns or correlations within files or objects, but are never been designed to basically reduce data across files or across objects. And so good for local compression, but not necessarily good if you want to find opportunities for additional efficiencies. You look across your files and your objects. So that's why deduplication was invented. And deduplication engines have been around since uh, kind of hard drives were applied to using next generation levels of efficiency for backup infrastructure. Um, but if you think about that with respect to file and object workloads, it's very different from how deduplication was invented to solve the problems of backup, right? And the interesting thing is that if you think about um, a classic deduplication system, it's basically optimized for applications that are writing repetitive data. So in the case of backups, that's a backup file you might write every night. In the case of, let's say, a VDI environment, you may be storing a lot of the same copies of the same systems images that you want to deduplicate as opposed to storing whole copies of that data. But the problem with deduplication is that they use a certain type of um, hash called a cryptographic hash. So let's say this is SHA-256, which is a common cryptographically strong hash function that is used to basically create a fingerprint on a piece of data and then start to analyze if there's other data that's already in the system that has a common fingerprint. And so, for example, if you have two blocks that are cryptographically proven to be exactly the same, you just basically keep one of the blocks and then you maintain pointers to the other ones that you don't have to otherwise store. So that's great for re highly repetitive data, but if you think about it, with respect to this data set, what you have is a block format that is reasonably chunky. Most deduplication systems will reduce data anywhere between 8 kilobyte to 128 kilobyte blocks. And so what happens is that any amount of entropy or any amount of difference between these blocks ultimately trips up a cryptographic hashing engine such that you won't find any correlations between this. And so ultimately what happens is that most unstructured data sets that aren't built from highly repeated data, well, they're not going to work with classic deduplication applications. On the flip side, um, those applications that I was just talking about, they're not creating entirely new data every day. They're just doing slight transformations to different subjects that they're kind of computing on. And so we basically built a new systems architecture that essentially looks at all these blocks. And um, as data flows into the cluster, what will happen is that it'll be stored in a write buffer. What we don't do is we don't instantaneously store that data down into flash because we don't want to wear down low endurance flash drives prematurely, prematurely. So we keep this data in a buffer. As the buffer fills up, we start to run a fingerprinting algorithm on the blocks just like a deduplication appliance would work. And so let's say we're using the same blocks or the same block pattern. And these blocks are all flowing through the system classic cryptographic hash would not find any correlations within these blocks. On the flip side, we use a different type of hashing function that we call a sim hash. And that sim hash is most common to the type of kind of data science that you'd find in a, in a popular search engine where you're basically looking to find and express similar uh, similarity between different pieces of data as opposed to looking for something that is exactly the same every time. If you 
upload a photo to an image search engine, you'll find a lot of pictures that look kind of like what you've uploaded, but aren't exactly like what you've uploaded. And so the interesting thing is that our system has the ability to detect these similarities, and what we can do is we start to logically group these blocks together in what we call a similarity cluster. And every new block that enters into a similarity cluster gets delta compressed against the reference block that's already in the system. And so let's say that first block that comes into the system is 1112, and then you just have to store the 3 and the 4, and you've saved roughly uh, an additional uh, like 50 set 50 percent or so in space by not having to store all the repeated data that is um, common across all the blocks. And so this pattern matching, it goes all the way across your namespace, like a, um, a classic scalable deduplication appliance would work, but the granularity that we can find patterns is far, far smaller than a classic, classic deduplication approach would do. So if, if systems typically deduplicate blocks in 32 kilobyte chunks on average, our system go, can go down to just single byte range in terms of how it looks for patterns within data. And by definition, it's far less sensitive to noise that you have within your data. And so the cool thing about this is twofold. One is when you look across our state of customers, most of the environments are dealing with compressed and deduplicated data. And on average, we're now showing six to one data reduction across all of the different types of um, data that customers are storing in our system. But on the flip side, the other interesting part of this architecture is that unlike classic deduplication systems that are designed for global deduplication, we have a collection of stateless enclosures, uh, excuse me, stateless containers. And these containers all have shared access over NVMe over fabrics to a pool of NVMe devices that each can share access to using shared everything data structures. And so because of this, what happens is if you think about um, deduplication architectures of the past, what you'd have is an index that would have to be kept in a controller right next to a CPU. And so the CPU would have uh, quick lookups to that index that lives in memory, and then the index would have to be mirrored across a number of nodes. So this is kind of what your kind of classic backup appliance would look like. Now the problem becomes when you start to think about scaling out larger and larger systems, what happens is that these architectures have to start repeating the amount of memory that's copied across nodes over and over and over again. And that becomes a very expensive proposition for people that don't want to pay for mem pay more for memory than they're saving in storage. And in our case, all of that lives in a shared pool of NVMe resources that's accessible by not just two storage controllers, but 2,000 or even more storage controllers that are all completely stateless. So from a hardware perspective, it's a far more efficient way to store data reduction metadata than what you classically have with these kind of legacy systems architectures. And this is where we get to real levels of hardware efficiency on top of the architecture that we've built to deliver much finer granularity for data reduction. And so the concept is called similarity. And typically we're finding if customers have already experienced data reduction within their environments, we typically see around twice the efficiency but if you've deployed an unstructured data storage system like a file store or an object store, half of those systems, customers never even thought to turn on data reduction, or in certain cases, the architectures don't even support the ability to further reduce data. When they start storing their files and objects into our systems, they're very surprised by the gains that they see. A great example is even in the case of a backup environment, let's say um, we work with Commvault, As an example backup partner that we work with, Commvault already has its own native compression and deduplication inherent in the system. And when that data gets stored down into our system, because our pattern matching is so much more fine grained than even Commvault's approach is, the data reduction that we can achieve on, on top of what they achieve basically becomes a compounding level of savings. So if they're at five to one, and we're just at a modest three to one data reduction, that means that these two numbers combine with each other so that customers see 15 to one data reduction for their backup estate. Now flash is far more affordable than what you've spent for spinning disk-based architecture. And you know, in particular with the backup use case, you have a, a, a ransomware ready solution that can give you real time, 
rapid recovery to all of your data because you don't worry about the kind of pains associated with fragmenting your data down to hard drives using kind of legacy backup approaches using their deduplication approaches. And so that's one of the many examples that customers see from our similarity-based data reduction. And the, the savings are definitely data dependent. Uh, we have a utility called the Probe that allows customers to basically figure out how their data will reduce according to our new algorithms. And you can deploy that as a standard simple Linux container that just chews through your data and then um, provides an estimate of what you would see with our systems. So thanks for watching. Thanks for learning a little bit more about similarity-based data reduction. There's so much more that we have to explain. You can find that on our website at vastdata.com. And if you get there, you can just click on the chat button at the bottom right of the website and you can start talking to us today. Thank you.